welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what is Cosell watching? Uh, this particular series draws me back to my childhood. Recently, I watched on Netflix the four-part series High Score, which is a history of video games and how they have impacted culture and their evolution. And it actually goes into the history of how it really began. Remember Pong for all of you, all of those in my age group, maybe a little bit older, which was like the first in-game, uh, in-home video console with the two lines hitting the ball, kind of like a really boring chess match. And then things really got kicked up because the Japanese who have been incredibly influential in this realm in terms of the design play, the characters, and the way the games just look and feel came up with Space Invaders. Now, I still remember growing up in Valencia, California at the time, about eight or nine years old, games like Asteroids and Space Invaders, they were absolutely uh, the funnest time to have. You went to a local uh, convenience store or any place that had a video game machine, you would just beg your mom for a quarter or two while she got done all her errands, and then video arcade started popping up. And let me just tell you something, folks. If you had a $5 bill and you put that bill into a change machine, it felt like you were Scrooge McDuck swimming around in a bunch of money. Greatest two, three hours you could spend. And so then it actually talks about how the video game console, when it went in home, now obviously the two games that uh, I remember, uh, the companies were Atari 2600, and then really in television, they were the two big brands. Uh, I was stuck with the company called Magnavox. They had an Odyssey system. That's what I got for uh, birthday one year. You know what? It was fine. It was a fun game. I love KC Munchkin, which was like their bootleg version of Pac-Man, which by the way, that was a lot better than the Pac-Man version of Atari 2600. That was panned by critics. It also had a funny segment on maybe the worst video game of all time in terms of cartridge video games from Atari 2600, which was the E.T. game. That game was so bad, I don't think that little E.T. wanted to phone home. Uh, there's actually been documentaries about how bad that game is and rumors of where thousands of cartridges are just like buried underneath maybe the uh, bottom of the uh, Meadowlands. And so it's really interesting. I, I take a look at when this thing really exploded, when it became mainstream. It was actually at a time when the arcade game started to lose importance. And I remember Nintendo. Nintendo was so fun. Uh, again, another company from Japan that really dominated the marketplace. And then eventually you had PS5. But I wanted to make this point. The games that I enjoyed, whether it was at the arcade with the big game consoles or something you could plug in at home. Yeah, I get it. They, they didn't have the, the graphics. It didn't have the technology. All you basically needed was a joystick or a pad and you'd have fun. I, I don't think that you re really cared too much about the actual realistic quality of certain games, whether it was Pitfall or Donkey Kong or Pole Position. At the end of the day, it's a fantasy world. And I almost think that today's games are too realistic and almost too complicated to play. It's almost like trying to fly a fighter jet. And I'm like, you know what? Uh, I just want to go out there and blow up a few things, uh, just have some fun. Uh, one of my personal favorite games, because it was so fun and I was actually decent at it, was a game called Rampage. Remember Rampage? You were like either King Kong or Godzilla, and you'd, you'd basically blow up and destroy buildings while they tried to get you. I thought that was a really fun game. I look at games today, and I just wonder what type of effect they're having on society, because now kids are basically staying home 12, 14, 16 hours and having these marathon sessions where they get lost in this world that really almost starts to blur the line for them at least in terms of reality and fantasy. And so I always thought that was interesting. And then uh, one of the parts actually deals with the iconic brand of Madden football. To a lot of younger kids, John Madden is a video game. To guys like me, he's a great football coach who became the master pitch man. But you look at the evolution of Madden football from what it was to what it is now and the grip that it has on society, it's actually uh, really, really interesting. 
But again, I, I wonder, were the earlier versions of Madden, once they got that ball rolling, were they actually better? Do you, like, I, we watch so much football. Do we really need video games that actually look like the real thing to that degree? Um, but anyway, you know, video games have been a part of my life growing up as a child of the 80s. They were something that were very ubiquitous. And to see the evolution to a point now where the gamers themselves are now considered athletes. Again, you can argue whether they're athletes or not, but here's a fact. They now give away college scholarships. They have tournaments, which are highly successful. And guys are making a lot of money. You know what? Maybe they are athletes. So that's what I was watching. And so as I wind this up here, I want to talk about the three games that I love the best. Uh, and I know a lot of people are going to disagree. And again, I was not a very good video game player. Uh, basically, if you got my 25 cents, for the most part, that lasted about five minutes at most. So here are the three games that really stood out that I'd be like, you know what? If I have a dollar and about an hour to waste, I'd put it in that slot. Number one, Miss Pac-Man. One of the great sequels ever because it was basically a fancier version of the regular Pac-Man. Um, and I did have Pac-Man fever. It was driving me crazy. But it actually had a lot more elements like eating of the fruit, uh, the different mazes that, that they had, the different levels. And also, when Miss Pac-Man, when it was programmed to be a little bit faster, oh man, I could actually get to about 80 to 90,000, which for me was really good. Then you had Galaga. Now Galaga was basically Space Invaders 2.0, but a lot cleaner in look and design. And folks, can we be honest? Was there anything better in life when you got the two guys attached at the hip and you just became a shooting gallery? Yeah, you were a bigger target, but you know what? You could get on a good run once you got the double guy. And you, boy, I, I was actually pretty decent at that game. Not like I, I was good enough to be top 10. I'd put my initials in KIM. And finally, perhaps my all time favorite video game, Arkanoid. Yeah, Arkanoid. I may be the only guy in America saying it, but Arkanoid was basically breakout on steroids because you had the vitamin pellets. Uh, yeah, things were, you could all of a sudden shoot through the wall, the balls would multiply, or you just get to the next level. True story. This is the only game I've ever been a lead at. I almost finished the game at Disneyland, but I didn't know how to finish the game. And people started forming a crowd around me, watching me, because I was there for a good couple of hours. Yeah, there's all that. So basically I was in there for a line at uh, Space Mountain and then I blew it at the end. And just, so basically the three games that I mentioned, why are they my three favorite games? Folks, because they're the only games I really could play uh, <laughs> worth a dog on. Anyway, that's it for this edition of What Cosell is Watching. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you never miss a moment of fearless.